Cheers guys and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. It's been a few weeks since the last Pancast and in today's episode we're going to talk about this Demeyer Proline Atlantis. Put up a big review of this guy a few days ago getting a lot of feedback about that so we're going to go through some comments from you guys from the community about that Demeyer review and about these Demeyer pans. I'm going to talk Kamado Joe. Found a screaming deal on a Kamado Joe Classic 2 uh, smoker grill. Going to go through that. Going to talk a little bit about peanut butter and Sam's Club and more. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing is I want to, it's not really a new policy, I want to just let everybody know that when you post comments below my videos, um, I read those comments. I tried to read every one. I used to respond to every comment, which was a lot easier to do when I had 33 subscribers. Now we're getting up around 33,000 subscribers around here. And I just don't have enough time to write two or 300 comments, replies every day. But I want everybody to know that I do read your comments. So if you see that I, I give you a thumbs up for your comment, that's gonna let everybody know that I read your comment. Now I'm still gonna reply to as many as I can and ones that I think are more applicable to a more general, wider audience I'm going to surface in these pancasts. But I want you to know if you see that if I click a thumbs up for your comment, that lets you know at least that I read your comment, even if I don't type out a big reply. So with that said, I want to jump into some of the feedback I got about the big uh, Demeyer Proline Atlantis review. If you haven't seen the review, I'll put a link somewhere below this video or a link from the screen somewhere if you want to check out the full video. But I did give the pan a thumbs up. Um, I think some people are going to think this pan is the greatest pan in the entire world. Other people, same pan, they're not going to like it. And that is really reflected in some of the comments I got and the feedback I got below the uh, review video. So let's jump into some of those. They really fall into a couple of different baskets here. There's people that like the quality. There are people who don't like the price but are kind of happy with the quality. And then there are other people that say the pan is just too doggone heavy to make it easy to use. So let's jump in and read a couple of these. Grace wrote in, says she has two Demires and she thinks they are the best. Uh, she plans to give them to her children at some point. So one thing I have not seen in any of the comments is anyone complaining about any kind of quality issues. Everybody seems to be very happy with the Demire quality and the complaints are more about the price and the weight. Um, as far as price, Tector Gorch says $300, not for him. He is out. Comes a horseman, says the weight doesn't bother him, but the price does. He says it performs well, though. So a little bit of a mix there. Melanie Matson wrote in and says, comparing this uh, Demeyer to the all-clad D3, she likes the D3 better because it is thinner and more responsive. So this is a thick, heavy pan, over six pounds. Very difficult to move around. Um, some people are going to like that because it's got a lot of thermal mass. Um, it's kind of sort of similar in that respect to uh, cast iron. You get that heavy cast iron with a lot of thermal mass. It's going to maintain a lot of heat once you get it heated properly. Same thing with this pan. The pan, though, on the other hand, is not going to be very responsive. So the Allclad D3, if you want a more responsive, more maneuverable pan, if that's what you like, uh, you might like that D3 better. Let's see, now then AD writes in and says he loves the videos. He says, I need to get some half moon reading glasses so that I can just peer over the top of them instead of having to remove them all the time whenever I talk to the camera. Side note here, I wear contact lenses normally. Without any contact lenses, I can see close up, but I can't see far away. The eye doctor had me on these contact lenses where one lens let me see far away and one lens let me read up close, but it seemed like there was always something out of whack. Nothing was ever perfect. So I said, change me over to where I can see far away in both eyes and I'll just get readers for uh, reading up close. The problem here is that I forget to take my readers around. Sometimes in restaurants, I'll have to take a picture of the menu on my phone and then zoom in on the image on my phone just to be able to order food or what I've also found works really well is just hand things to my wife and ask her to read them for me. A person wrote in and said, thanks for the honest and thorough review. 
Um, seems to be the most anticipated review. Lots of people are actually asking about that review and wants to know what I think about washing the pan also in terms of weight and size. Um, as far as washing the pan, I wash all of my good cookware by hand. And this Demeyer Proline Atlantis, I didn't notice anything out of the norm. It's a uh, standard cleanup for a stainless steel skillet. For normal frying purposes, it washes out just fine with dish soap and a sponge. And then for any of the higher temp sears or you know, higher temp cooking, especially on the gas stove where flames are kind of going up around the sides and get some oil on the sides, that tends to get sticky. And for that, I use just some uh, all clad stainless steel cleaner or some barkeeper's friend, and both of those clean everything right up. But nothing out of whack for the uh, cleanup. Any buddy or booty wrote in and said, I didn't mention anything about the temperature performance of the handle. Uh, that's true. Uh, when I'm doing these review videos, sometimes I get a little long in the tooth. I cut things down and cut things out. That kind of got cut out, but the handle, I never had it get too hot. Even on the gas stove, the handle stayed cool to the touch. And finally on the Meyer TCM wrote in and says he thinks it's the best pan on the market. For people that like that heavier pan, I think they're probably right for them. For people who don't like the heavier pans and want a more responsive pan, other people are right. And one thing I want to note here on the Demeyer, with all this feedback I've received on the Demeyer pans, no one has written in with any type of quality problems. Everybody says that it cooks really well and they really like the quality. Some people think it's the best in the world. And the complaints seem to be about the price and some people not wanting a pan this heavy. Take that. Uh, today we're having a glass of inexpensive wine. And I'll tell you why in a little while. On the hyperinflation front, the CPI was released today at a 40 year high. Holy cow. Overall CPI up four tenths of a percent from last month, up 8.2% year over year. As it relates to stuff we talk about around here, food costs up 0.8% over last month and 11.2% higher over last year. Good Lord, the price of food is going up almost 1% a month. Now, without going too crazy on politics or anything, what gets me about the Fed or these people uh, with the wars in Ukraine or wherever is that there's a small handful of people that make decisions that really affect all of us. So. If the Fed raises their interest rates a couple of percent, everybody loses a couple hundred grand off the value of their house. These people, it's very annoying when, when these, the small number, the small handful of people makes decisions and arguably bad decisions that negatively affect hundreds of millions or billions of us. What can we do? I don't know. Uh, it says the Fed bases its decisions on a 2% inflation target. So if the target's 2% and we're running at 8.2%, what are they going to do to get that down 6.2%? Are they just going to beat the economy and the labor market into submission? Who knows, but it's probably not going to be pretty. This guy is or was an executive with Beyond Meat. He allegedly got in a fight with another person and bit off part of a man's nose. First of all, that's not vegan. No. But can you imagine working for this guy? This guy was an executive. What if that was your boss? Suddenly I understand this desire to work from home. Good Lord, can you imagine going in, asking that guy for a raise? Might bite your head off. We do joke a little bit about Beyond Meat around here from time to time. I'm going to be careful if I uh, crack a joke around that guy, though. Um, but I just want to show the chart. If you're a chart watcher on stocks, when Beyond Meat went public a couple of years ago, their stock price was up around 196 Checked earlier before this video, about $15. So that is down roughly 90%. If you're a buy and hold person, you may need to hold till the year 3000 to get your money back. I think the problem with Beyond Meat though, and I go back to my marketing class in MBA school, when you've got a new product entering a market, it needs to be a lot better than an entrenched competitor. It needs to be a lot cheaper. And in Beyond Meat's case, it needs to be healthier. 
Just me personally, I don't think the Beyond Meat patties are that much healthier than ground beef. Uh, they got a lot of fat in them. I would rather just have the beef. I don't think they taste as good as real beef and they're very expensive. That is a tough ask. Well, I was up before sunrise rubbing my butt. A Boston butt, that is. I got this Kamado Joe smoker. I got this one at Costco. Nearing the end of barbecue season, I went into a Costco and they had taken all the kind of summertime stuff, you know, the camp chairs and the tents and all that stuff, grills, and moved them over to the corner and they had moved in all the Christmas Halloween stuff. So I already got the Christmas trees and all that stuff out there, but they had a lot of the summertime stuff marked way down. I got a screaming deal on this one and I can't find it on the Costco website. It seems to be warehouse store specific, but I got this thing for $690. My brother, he's a big time barbecue guy. I called him up and asked him what he thought of that price. He said, buy one immediately. Now I read on the internet and therefore it is true that you can tell a lot about items at Costco based on the price, specifically the last two digits in the price of an item at Costco. Usually normal items are gonna be listed with a price ending in 99 cents. This grill was in zero zero with an asterisk. And what that's supposed to mean is that that is a manager special. It's not going to be repeated and that asterisk means it may not be restocked. And not only was this price good, I went to a different Costco a couple of weeks later. They also had these same grills. They were up around $800 at a different Costco around town. Why do I go to different Costco's? Because my wife signed my son up for piano lessons, which is a great thing to do. Only the teacher lives 25 miles away. So we get to traverse the Salt Lake Valley down to down past Provo on I-15 once a week now, kind of a 50 mile road trip that has been added to my schedule, but I pass by multiple Costco's and I often stop in and check them out. Believe it or not, they are not all the same. One will have Gruyere cheese and another won't, for example. Why? I don't know. But uh, one Costco had these Kamados for $6.90, another place up around $800 at a different Costco. If you have any interest in these Kamados whatsoever, uh, you can't get them on the Costco website, but I would go to your local Costco and see if they have any of these manager specials and see what the price is. Also in Sam's the other day, and we talked about the recall of Jif peanut butter and how hard it was to find Jif a month or two ago. And I've been switched over to Skippy. And I still kind of like the Skippy. So Skippy's back in the rotation, but I do notice that the Jif is back on the shelves at Sam's. So check that out if you've been looking for Jif to make a return. Why are we drinking a glass of inexpensive, perhaps cheap, economical wine this week? kind of in memory and honor of Fred Franzia. He passed away. Um, if you're unfamiliar with him, he was behind the Bronco Wine Company, that uh, Charles Shaw wine, the two buck chuck, lots of people saw at Trader Joe's. So he was known for his wines being at the more value, economical end of the wine spectrum. But he also said he wanted wine to be consumed and enjoyed in every American household. Sounds like a worthy goal to me. And we raise a glass to Fred.